All right, in this unit, we're turning to pragmatism, uh, which is often seen as America's distinctive contribution to the world of philosophy. There's a great deal of uh, truth to this, while the two other philosophies that we've looked at so far, idealism and realism, are both ancient uh, philosophical systems and have had their roots in uh, Europe, clearly, and then over the course of several centuries of uh, philosophizing, so there are various uh, versions of uh, idealism and realism that develop. But nonetheless, uh, all of those variations uh, on philosophy up until the 19th century are essentially European-based. Uh, as the United States came uh, to be a world power, not only economically, politically, and so forth, but also culturally uh, and intellectually, it made its own distinctive contributions to the world of philosophy, starting in the second half of the 19th century, and the first generation of major pragmatist philosophers, Charles Peirce, William James, and then a little bit later, uh, John Dewey, uh, all of them are, are, are American thinkers. But pragmatism is also seen as the distinctively American uh, contribution to world philosophy, in part uh, for the content of the philosophy, which seems to resonate with very strongly American themes. Uh, the pragma root, uh, the first half of the word here, is a Greek root, but it's a, a word that means in the Greek uh, work, right? So what we're emphasizing is workability, right? Doability or functionality. And what's built into pragmatism as a philosophical system is, uh, to put it negatively, a distrust for theoretical abstraction, for ivory, uh, ivory tower speculation, Right, or for any sort of idle speculation, uh, any sort of sense that philosophy has its head in the clouds and isn't really uh, deeply connected to practical, real-life workability uh, uh, in the natural world. Now, all of that, of course, sounds uh, realist, and uh, at a certain level of abstraction, that same sort of criticism about ivory tower, otherworldlyism, is uh, a standing uh, a realist criticism of the idealist tradition. Uh, and I think it then is fair to say that pragmatism is, broadly speaking, uh, in the realist tradition, if you uh, cast your historical net very widely um, here. Uh, many of the same founders that we find in the realist tradition, particularly in the modern world, uh, Francis Bacon and John Locke, the pragmatists will also cite those among their founders as well. But nonetheless, pragmatism is critical also of, uh, of realism as a philosophy and critical on some fairly fundamental issues. Uh, so it then, uh, as it develops, uh, is, as a spin-off, right, of, as into its own distinctive uh, philosophical approach. And what the pragmatists will do is argue uh, from their perspective in the 19th century that while they are more sympathetic to the realist way of d doing things, nonetheless, the criticisms that they can make of idealism still hold for realism uh, in, a, in a much less degree, uh, or much less significant degree, uh, because both the idealists and the realists from the pragmatist perspective share certain fundamental assumptions.